So first off, I just wanna thank everybody who purchased the Spatial Audio Calibration Toolkit. I speak for myself as well as Technodad in saying that we are very thankful and grateful for all of you who have supported and all of you who have found a lot of use from this toolkit. One of the requests we've gotten often is for us to make videos. I did make a full guide, but I understand that some people just are more visual learners. So I'm gonna try to go over some of the stuff in that guide. We've also set up a Discord group specifically for owners. And there's also a section for people who have questions prior to ordering. And so we do our best to answer that as quickly as possible. So it's a pretty active community. There's a lot of people in there helping each other out and it's a lot of fun. I also do my best to try to keep track of questions on ABS forum and some of the other forums, but it's just hard to keep track of all of them. So that's why we prefer to use Discord. It's not something that you need to do, but I think that we've added a lot of value in being able to help each individual with their specific issues, or some people are just there to share their ideas. So the section I wanna cover this time is for timing and distance. So that's section five, timing test. Okay, so here's the menu. We're gonna go here to timing test and you'll see that all of them have front left in common. So you see front left and center, front left and front right, et cetera. And over here, the final one is the final timing check. So right now let's try front left and center. One. Two. Three. So what you'll notice there is you'll hear alternating test tones and it's a series of eight doot 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 followed by Shauna saying a number. So in this case, it's one, two, three, all the way up to 30. So now that you know what the track is, let's get into the reasons why you might wanna use this and how it actually can be used. I still think that using a calibrated mic and REW will give you the most accurate possible results, but not a lot of people are familiar with that, but we do have test tones at the end of the disc. In the advanced section, we have something called impulse response, and that's what you would use if you wanted to use a calibrated mic. But the idea here is we wanted to make it simple for anybody to use without having to have a mic. So I wanna reiterate that I still think that using a calibrated mic is the most accurate way, but I do think that this is also a valid way to do this. And some may argue that because we're using our ears, which is a binaural system, kind of two inputs, that you may be able to get different results. And some people may even say that there are superior results to using a mic. So that's up for debate. That's not what we're doing here today. So looking at the full guide here, I'm just gonna go over the different sections. In this first section here, I'm basically just talking about how ideally you want the sound from all of the speakers to arrive at your ear at the exact same time. Now, not everybody's perfectly in the center between all their speakers. Sometimes you have a speaker that's closer to you, some that are further, and you have to use time delays in order to make them arrive at your ears at the same time. Depending on your AVR, it may be presented as either a distance measurement in feet or meters, or as milliseconds in time. The speed of sound is for the most part pretty constant, and so we are able to calculate one for the other. It's not something you need to know at this moment, just know that they're kind of interchangeable. It's also important to know that we delay the speakers to the latest speakers. So for example, if you think about a group of people running around the track and there's one guy who's a little bit slower than the rest, well, everybody has to be behind that guy, right? You can't be in front of them and say, hey man, you speed up to keep up with the rest of us. It doesn't work like that. Basically, if you want all of them to work as a group, everybody has to go in pace with the slowest one. And in most cases, that's usually the subwoofer. And that is because most of the modern subwoofers have DSP, which adds delay inherently. Now, because subwoofers have delay that's based on the electronics, not based on distance, that's why it's not always the smartest idea to use physical measurements. What you wanna do is use an acoustic measurement because even though a subwoofer is, let's say 10 feet away, with the added delay, it may be something more like as if it were 20 feet away. So that's a mistake that I see a lot of people making is they are adjusting the delay based on the physical distances only. And it's really important that you actually use the acoustic delay. Now this test track is interesting in that we created it so that you could use your ears to figure out the timing differences. And a lot of people would say, well, you know, maybe our ears aren't accurate. And it's true, our ears are not as accurate as a microphone in many situations. Specifically, when it comes to the frequency response, a microphone is much more accurate at determining the different frequencies 
and how loud each frequency is. Also, our range of human hearing is only from about 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, and a microphone can surpass that. But our ears are excellent at hearing timing differences between one ear and the other ear. So that's our binaural system at work. And it helps us determine where sound is coming from. And that's why it's so important that we get the timing differences between speakers as close as possible. And just to prove this, and I don't know if you guys have ever done this, but if you've ever played a single track from one device, let's say an iPad, and then also on your phone and try to kind of synchronize them by pausing and unpausing, I may be the only one who does that, but you'll notice that when it's right on, it just snaps into place. Uh, Chana is a DJ, so he knows how to beat match, things like that. But if you've ever experienced that, you notice when there's a slight difference, even the tiniest, tiniest difference, you can tell that it's not perfectly matched. But when they are directly in line, everything just kind of snaps into place. And that's kind of the principle we're working with right now. We're trying to see when sounds snap into place. So I've created the test tone specifically so that it covers a wide range of bass frequencies as well as mid-range and higher frequencies. So we're trying to cover a wide range, but at the same time, I wanted you to be able to differentiate between the tick and the talk. And so what I've done is I've kind of offset the notes. So they're playing about the same range, but slightly different notes. I did that on purpose because if it was just the same exact tick, 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 you may not know if you're on the correct tick. Right? But because we have it set up so it's like tick tock, tick tock, it's easier to tell. In addition, after every eight, Chana says a number. The tones that we play are as quick as possible so you can kind of think of them as impulses. And we've also used Chana's voice because in certain cases, it's easier to align a human voice than it is to hear just bleeps and bloops. So what you'll notice is that we always start with the left speaker, that is our reference speaker, and then we're gonna compare the other ones in a clockwise fashion. So first off, it's left and center, then left and right, left and wide right, left and right surround, etc. Both speakers are gonna play the same content at the same time. And what you wanna look for is that there should be one sound. It shouldn't sound like it's tick-tock, tick-tock, tick-tock. It should sound like they're both happening at the same exact time. That means that the two corresponding speakers are time aligned. Another hint that they're well matched is that the image will seem to come from somewhere between the two speakers. If you're starting completely from scratch and you're not using any of the auto calibration features in your AVR, what I would recommend is first measuring the physical distance to the left speaker. I know I said we're not doing that, but just for the left speaker, measure the physical distance and then use that as a starting point for the rest of the speakers. That will get it so that at least you're somewhat in the same ballpark. Now for the subwoofer, if you're using something that does have DSP, you're gonna wanna add a minimum of 10 milliseconds of delay just to get it in a similar range. Now to be more efficient with your time, what I would recommend is that certain AVRs can adjust with 0.5 increments or 0.1 increments, so bigger jumps between them versus smaller jumps, what I'd recommend at first is start with the big jumps. So let's just say that your AVR works in feet. So if your left speaker is at 10 feet, let's say your center speaker is maybe a little bit forward. So let's say that's at 11 feet. Now we don't know exactly. So what you can do for the center speaker is maybe try it at 15 feet, even though you know it's not that far. You're gonna hear that it's off and you can compare 10 feet versus 15 feet and then go in half, go in half steps. So let's say in between, let's say you try uh, 13 feet, right? And you hear, oh, that's, that's still a little bit off. Instead of going to 12, you may wanna go down to 11. If that's better, go in between the 12. So you see how you're kind of narrowing it in from the two sides. So you go from one extreme to the other extreme, kind of like playing that old kids game, guess who, right? You're trying to eliminate as many possibilities as possible in one shot. After you get them all pretty close, then that's when you're gonna to wanna to change the AVR to something more specific, like 0.1 dB increments. And at that point, you can start really fine tuning it and getting the sounds to sound exactly at the same point, directly in between the two speakers. Now the tough thing with some AVRs is that they aren't that quick at changing the time delay. So when you change the delay, there might be a gap where there's some silence and depending on the AVR, 
you may or may not experience that. One pro tip is to use the web app. If you can log into your AVR using a website, then you may be able to change the distance and delay on that and have less delay than using the actual remote itself. So of course, you're gonna wanna integrate your subwoofers and make them blend seamlessly as well. And of course, part of that is having the timing correct. That's why with these test tones, I've included lower frequencies as well. And so those will activate the subwoofer. You can also use this with bass shakers as well. If you have tactile transducers, it'll play the test tones. You should be able to hear and feel the sound as if they're one specific sound. You don't wanna hear three different sounds, doo -doo -doo -doo, right? You wanna hear one specific sound. You like that sound effect? So if you're using one sub, what you can do is you can play the left speaker and the LFE. And when they play the test tones, they should sound like the other speakers, like one specific tone. It shouldn't sound like two separate tones where the sub is playing one tone and the main speaker is playing another. They should sound like they're working together in harmony. A little bit more advanced yet would be if you have multiple subwoofers, you can still use this, although most AVRs only have one or two subwoofer out, but it's really just one LFE channel. Now, if you have two or more subs, you're gonna need to kind of trick your system into allowing that since LFE is just one single channel, even if you do have multiple subs connected to it. A quick hack would be if you wanna align the subwoofers to each other, let's say if each sub has its own delay and timing, then you're gonna wanna make sure that they kind of work together first. And what you can do is you can plug in one subwoofer to the left channel and the second subwoofer to the right channel. And when you go and play the left and right timing test, they should play both of the subs at the same time. What your goal now is to make sure that the subs themselves are playing at the same time. And you can do this for multiple subwoofers as well. You can also use the polarity test and the speaker pairs section to make sure that the subwoofers are about level matched. So hopefully that was useful to some of you guys. What I would recommend is if you have an AVR with presets, what you can do is maybe save one preset as the automatic calibration and then another preset with all the same settings except with manual calibration of timing. And then what you can do is use the final test track where it plays all of the speakers using the same exact test tones and they should all still sound like they're playing at the same exact time. So that's the final test of this section. And go ahead and play some music, some of your favorite movies. So the goal is for everything to sound cohesive as if you're not hearing different speakers instead you're just immersed in this bubble of sound. So that is the Spatial Audio Calibration Toolkit, section five for timing and reference. If you don't already have one of these, we have it at spatialcd.com. And there's also a digital version, as well as of course the physical version if you're into that. And there's a package where you can buy both. So take a look and that's it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you like the video, make sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell to be notified when I upload new videos. That's it, take care, bye-bye.